we will now move on to the next lecture. And as I've mentioned before, we'll take further questions at the end of the uh, three lectures. And I am going to, to give the next uh, lecture entitled the EFSIM guidelines and recommendations on the clinical practice of contrast enhanced ultrasound. The, I, I have pre-recorded my lecture, but I'm, I will be here at the same time. I am Professor Paul Sidhu from King's College Hospital in London, and I'd like to speak to you about the EFSIM guidelines and the recommendations on the clinical practice of contrast enhanced ultrasound. By way of background, I'm going to discuss, first of all, why we use more often CT and MR than ultrasound in making the diagnosis of a focal liver lesion. But first of all, I'd like to give you the background on why we shouldn't be using so much CT and also why we should also be using less MRI when we have the ability with contrast enhanced ultrasound to diagnose a focal liver lesion very accurately. Let's first of all look at this seminal paper produced by Brenner and Hall in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2007. They examined the amount of radiation patients were receiving from CT scans in the United States in 2006. The chart here on the left demonstrates the number of CT examinations increasing exponentially over the period of time from 1980 when CT was first introduced into clinical practice to 2006 when this paper was published to over 60 million CTs in the United States. Of course, this has increased even further. Now, we'll all remember from when we were learning about radiation and learning about radiology that there is a radiation burden from dosage from all forms of X-ray examinations and in particular from CT examinations. If we look at this chart also from the same paper, it shows that the amount of many sieverts from an adult abdominal CT is 10, a neonatal abdominal CT is 20, the old-fashioned barium enema is 15, compared to a dental radiograph of 0 0.005. So there is not an insignificant amount of radiation in a CT examination. Brenner and Hall went on to explain in their paper that about 1.5 to 2% of all cancers in the United States may be attributable to radiation from CTs. The estimated risks, risks associated with CT are not hypothetical. That is, they are not based on models or ma major explorations in dose. They are based directly on measured excess radiation-related cancer rates among adults and children who in the past were exposed to the same range of organ doses as delivered by CT. So this is based on realistic studies. And importantly, a paper published in The Lancet in the uh, around about 2015, looking retrospectively at over 350,000 CT examinations in, in children, showed that there was a subsequent risk of leukemia and vein tumors in children. So exposing your patients to unnecessary radiation, of course, not all CT is unnecessary, and CT plays a very important role in the management of patient illnesses, but it's important for the radiologist or the imager to actually select those CTs that are beneficial to the patient without expo exposing patients unnecessarily to radiation. This is a paper presented in the RSNA in 2018, just to show the exponential growth continues in CT examinations, and this is emergency CTs between the years 2006 and 2016. This again has increased exponentially. Of course, cardiac CT was in its infancy uh, in 2006, but the increase is well over 1,000%. Spinal CTs, vascular CTs, and all other CTs have all increased substantially in, in the number of years. Not all of these are justified. Not all of these are needed. When ultrasound itself could have given you the answer, for instance, in a focal liver lesion. We're talking about the EFSIM guidelines, and it's important to, to take on board that EFSIM, or the European Federation of Societies in Ultrasound in Medicine and Biology, has been a strong advocate over the years for the use of ultrasound and contrast enhanced ultrasound and have produced a number of documentation 
relating to the use of contrast enhanced ultrasound, not only in the, the liver, but also in non-hepatic applications. And the statement that they produce via EFSAM in all these guidelines state as follows. Contrast enhanced ultrasound has a number of distinct advantages over CT and MRI. It can be performed immediately without any preliminary laboratory testing, and it be carried out in a variety of scenarios at the bedside, in the operating room, even next to the CT. But importantly, it operates in real time so that rapid changes can be captured. So contrast enhanced ultrasound in the agents we use as Sonoview in, in Europe is non-renal toxic. The met metabolism is such that the phospholipid shells are metabolized by the liver and the sulfur hexafluoride is exhaled, exhaled by the lungs. So it, there's absolutely no need for the preliminary laboratory testing as opposed to the contrast used in CT and MR. You can move your ultrasound machine anywhere and it you can be used as a point of care uh, examination. So you can take it to the patient, you can help out in the operating room and we've seen uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound used in neurosurgical patients very successfully and of course it can be used in an interventional uh, procedure that is occurring in the CT suite. The fact that you're watching this all the time and you can detect rapid changes is so important to making an essential correct diagnosis. But is it safe? Well contrast enhanced ultrasound has been around for a number of years now. We first started using uh, contrast in the late 1990s and over 25 years we have seen very little adverse effects both in the adult and the pediatric population. Remember in, in effect you're injecting two to four milliliters of contrast into a patient very much the same volume as you would inject with gadolinium for an MRI examination but the volumes are far less than that for a CT examination. Safety has been examined retrospectively, and this is a retrospective study out of Italy, looking at 23,000 investigations first reported in 2006. They had no fatal events in their, in their study, and adverse events were only reported in 29 investigations, or 0.0086% of investigations requiring contrast-enhanced ultrasound, and these were mild, itching, nausea, sense of warmth, dizziness, headache, mild hypotension. There are four adverse events which required treatment, two serious and two non-serious. The conclusion they uh, put out was that there was a lower adverse event rate reported than contrast for CT and MR imaging. And a number of other studies have also confirmed this low rate of adverse events. Post-marketing surveillance is a very important aspect of looking at the safety of, of any drug. And this post-marketing surveillance is for Sonovu, which is the agent that you're most likely to use for, for assessing uh, your focal liver lesions. I show three papers that have been produced on safety recently. The first was that Italian paper, but this is a paper also retrospectively examining um, pa patients who have had a contrast examination in 30,000 from China and had the same level of adverse events. And this is a, a paper looking at the safety in pediatric patients. So the safety in post-marketing surveillance, well, there was reported anaphylactoid reaction in 0.014% of patients, and this is pooled data. Severe anaphylactoid reactions were one in 10,000, and fatality was 14 out of 2.5 million, or 0.0006%. Predominant, and this compares with CT iodinated contrast that's reported at 0.001%. All these fatalities occurred with cardiac examinations, and these were in patients who were severely compromised with cardiac disease, undergoing dynamic con examinations on a treadmill. So the post surveillance data show that the agent we are using is extremely safe. And what is the evidence for using contrast enhanced ultrasound? Does it actually work? Well, today we're discussing focal liver lesions and it's important to remember that the Sonoview in, in particular is actually only licensed for four areas. It's licensed for the heart, it's licensed for the liver, it's licensed for the peripheral vascular system and it's licensed for the breast. 
Licensing for the breast, of course, came very early, but the use of contrast in breast imaging is probably not as great as it once was thought to be. Liver remains the main useful for contrast agents, but there is a multitude of other areas that contrast agents are used, including the kidney in assessing Gosniak cyst classification and many other areas in the body. It's very much a point of care tool. But let's just return to the value of contrast in the diagnosis of focal liver lesions. And I should put this to you. These are images of an unenhanced CT examination in a patient with an irregular liver, which is probably due to underlying cirrhotic liver disease. After you've administered the contrast, you see two hyper-enhancing lesions. No radiologist would report this sort of CT without the administration of contrast and maybe even ask for a triple phase CT examination, increasing the burden of radiation to the patient. The contrast as well adds to the morbidity that the patient is experiencing. Generally speaking, whenever there's a comparison between the findings of an ultrasound examination, it's between the unenhanced ultrasound and the enhanced CT scan. This is, of course, not a level playing field. I'll just show you two examples below here of uh, unenhanced and enhanced ultrasound examinations. Here is a patient with what obviously looks like a, a echogenic hemangioma. And after you administer contrast in the late phase, it disappears completely. Here's another patient with what looks like metastatic disease and administering contrast in the late phase, you actually pick up many, many more lesions, metastatic lesions, right down to two to three milliliter in diameter. So there is an obvious niche for contrast enhanced ultrasound. And we should move away from the thought that the B mode ultrasound is the end of the ultrasound examination. Adding contrast gives you much more information and brings ultrasound to the level of contrast-enhanced CT. Those of you who are old enough will, will probably remember that in the early days of CT, and I am talking 35 years ago, contrast was not routinely administered, and you required the permission of the radiologist to proceed on to using contrast. The contrast agents used in those days were much more uh, how would I say, toxic to the patient, and very often you had an adverse reaction in the ionic contrast media. It is now well established in Europe, Japan, Korea, and China using a number of contrast agents. I've alluded to Sonovu, which is the agent that you're most likely to use in your clinical practice, but the other agents available are Definity and Optison, used more in North America, and Sonosoid, which is an agent that was first produced in the late 1990s and is now licensed in Japan, Korea, and China, as well as Norway. Levovis was the very first agent we used, but this is a very unstable agent with, with palmitic acid with microbubbles of air and is no longer available. So there is extensive literature in the, in the use of contrast-enhanced ultrasound with over 4,500 patients papers produced. Importantly, in 2016, finally, the FDA approved the use of Sonovu for the assessment of focal liver lesions in the United States in both the adult and the pediatric population. And this becomes an important milestone in the use of contrast-enhanced ultrasound because in the United States, not only is it approved, but it is also reimbursed for investigations. And this then is beneficial to the patient because no longer would the patient be triaged to CT and MR unnecessarily, but will have a contrast enhanced ultrasound of a focal liver lesion to see whether in fact this is a CT or an MR is actually needed. The three papers below demonstrate the, the most recent uh, publication on focal liver lesions, which was updated by EFSM in 2020. Previously in uh, 2004 and 2008 and 2012 uh, publications were uh, produced by EFSM on the guidelines. Now, what about how accurate is contrast enhanced ultrasound? And I'm going to allude to Richard Barr's review paper 
um, on contrast enhanced ultrasound in focal liver lesions and the ac accuracy from pooled data. So first of all, let's compare unenhanced ultrasound to contrast enhanced ultrasound. How much better is contrast enhanced ultrasound than unenhanced ultrasound at characterizing that focal liver lesion? In this study by Quea, for 452 patients were looked at. The sensitivity of ultrasound in picking up a focal liver lesion was between 52 and 54%. But when you added contrast enhanced ultrasound, this increased to 81 to 85 percent. The specificity for B mode unenhanced ultrasound examination of a focal liver lesion was only between 40 and 43 percent. But when you added contrast, this increased to 95 percent. So there is a substantial improvement in your sensitivity and specificity of assessing a focal liver lesion if you add contrast to that study on ultrasound. But how does contrast enhanced ultrasound compare to contrast enhanced CT? Well, let's look at this study from Degen, which is the German Society of Ultrasound, which was a multi-center study, prospective study, looking at 267 patients reported by Karlheinz Seitzer and his group. In this study, Sensitivity of contrast enhanced ultrasound was 95.3%. Sensitivity of contrast enhanced CT was 90.6. Specificity for contrast enhanced ultrasound was 83.7. And specificity for contrast enhanced CT was 81.6. So this is very comparable. And this was reported in 2009, quite some years ago. And we should see a further improvement in the, the sensitivity and specificity with the improvement in the technology on the ultrasound machines. So clearly there is a role here for contrast enhanced ultrasound because it improves the accuracy of your ultrasound to the levels of that you've seen routinely in contrast enhanced CT. And it's very good at certain lesions. Hemangioma, the sensitivity can be 86%, a focal nodular hyperplasia, 88%, HCC 88% and importantly metastases 91% sensitive in picking up a metastases. And the conclusion was here from Richard Barr's review paper but that the literature suggests that the widespread use of contrast enhanced ultrasound is appropriate for focal liver lesions. And in the USA to which this paper was directed, the standard of care needs to change to include contrast enhanced ultrasound for characterization of focal liver lesions. Well, that has been achieved with the FDA approval for the use of contrast in focal liver lesion examination. And more importantly, in a, 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 a healthcare system that is driven by cost and profit, it is also reimbursed. Now, what about in Europe? Well, I'm going to show you, just bring to your attention two papers. This is the site's paper of the Degum uh, group, which looked prospectively at all those patients to find that it was extremely reliable for the differentiation of benign from malignant lesions. And this is the most important aspect of your examination or investigation of a focal liver lesion. Is it malignant or is it benign? And this is most important for the patient who is with you on that ultrasound couch as you're examining the patient and as you find that focal liver lesion, can you immediately tell with accuracy that this is a benign or a malignant lesion? Well, with the availability of contrast, you should be able to do that immediately for the patient. Also from the Degen study, was it cost effective? Well, yes, it was. A cost covering realization of CUS results in cost savings in the German healthcare system. So it's not only accurate, but sensitive and specific. It can reliably differentiate benign from malignant lesions, and it's cheaper. It's cheaper because it also stops downstream costs. You can stop any further investigations if you can reliably tell that this is a hemangioma. And not all hemangiomas are typical on your ultrasound study, as we all now experience atypical hemangiomas are probably more common than the normal echogenic lesion. 
So EFSIM guidelines will always, I will always stress the importance of the EFSIM guidelines because this parent body started and developed guidelines for focal liver lesions over the last 20 years. And it is seen as the bulwark or the most important society for the production of these guidelines and well respected throughout the world. 2004, first set of guidelines, 2008, next set of guidelines, and in 2011 on non-hepatic applications. And this is an important landmark paper. Important because non-hepatic outside the cardiac, peripheral, vascular, and breast are not licensed, not licensed for use. However, a learned society with about 25 authors came through to say that yes, we recommend and we issue guidelines on using contrast outside the licensed practice. And this is perfectly reasonable because a lot of drugs that are on the market now are not licensed for the use of which they're being administered, particularly in the pediatric population. Amoxicillin, paracetamol are not licensed for children, but used. But the regulations of your regulatory councils and, for instance, the general medical councils in the United Kingdom allow the physician to administer uh, a drug that's not licensed so long as it's backed by evidence, it is safe, and you take responsibility. And this is the basis for the non-hepatic applications of contrast enhanced ultrasound guidelines. Furthermore, in 2012, there was an update in the liver uh, guidelines. And this was in collaboration with the World Federation of Ultrasound Medicine Biology, with the Asian, Australian, American, South American, and an international group uh, looking at contrast enhanced ultrasound. And finally, two further pay, uh, guidelines came along with update of the non-hepatic guidelines in 2017, a, a statement on pediatric uh, practice in 2018, and then a statement on a position statement on the use of contrast in 2020 on characterization of Bosniak cysts and the European Registry on the Pediatric Use of Contrast um, Enhanced Ultrasound reported its findings. And these two uh, papers are the ones that the update simultaneously published on liver focal liver lesions in 2020 in Ultrasound in Medicine or the European Journal of Ultrasound and in Ultrasound in Medicine and Biology, the Journal of the World Federation in Ultrasound in Medicine and Biology. And to date, these are published just for a year and they have received over 500 citations in the literature. So these are very active areas of research and very active areas of clinical practice. The actual guidelines themselves are very large. There are 20,000 words, 281 references, and 38 authors. And in particular, it's targeted at all those countries around the world in orange that where contrast is for ultrasound is licensed. There are some areas of the world where this licensing has not progressed. Very often, it's a matter of whether or not commercially it's viable to actually support the use of contrast in these, these countries. There needs to be a network in, within the countries of support by the um, agency that's actually selling the, the uh, drugs to the to use in the medical practice. A total of 31 recommendations have been made in the guidelines from safety, where it's stated that it is safe, to make sure that when you're doing uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound, you know and recognize artifacts that are associated with the examination. Let's just pause now and look at how we examine a focal liver lesion. Now, this is going to be no different from the examination in a CT uh, setting, except you now are going to be by the patient for the entire examination, and this may last from four to six minutes long. There are still three phases, the arterial phase, which starts 10 to 20 seconds after injection, the portal venous phase, 45 seconds after injection, and the late phase. The difference between the ultrasound and the CT is the ultrasound will see all of this in four, four to six minutes, stored on a video clip for review. The CT will give you a snapshot in time at a time 
decided by the technician on which is most appropriate for the arterial portal venous in the late phases. And it's this dual blood supply of the liver that gives you the characterization that is seen in these liver lesions. And the characterization on contrast enhanced ultrasound is exactly the same as a CT examination, except it can be better. Why is it better? Well, there is leaking of contrast in CT in the equilibrium phase into the interstitium. The agents used in contrast enhanced ultrasound are truly intravascular, do not leak out of the vessels, and therefore when you see contrast in a structure, it is vascularized. And you can see the contrast agents right down to the single micro bubble because they reflect sound 300 times more than it's put in. So it's quite unique in the fact that if you even see one bubble moving through a, a structure, that structure is vascularized. Bubble, micro bubble disappearance occurs 240, 360 seconds after injection. And this is a limitation. It doesn't last forever, but you can repeat the injection for several times and it is absolutely safe. And this just charts for you the three phases and the late phase that you're looking at. So let's have a look at some benign focal liver lesions. Gvernacy mangioma is the lesion that we most often uh, find incidentally in our clinical practice. And classically, in the classic position, giving you the classic appearance of an echogenic lesion is a diagnosis that is quite straightforward on your uh, ultrasound examination. But very often, uh, you might, may want to follow up a lesion of this side, or it's tip, slightly atypical. You may want to follow it up with ultrasound, or you may suggest further imaging with MR or CT at this stage. What you want to do is to eliminate the need to do this by establishing that this is absolutely a benign cavernous hemangioma. And it does what it does in other imaging modalities. There is peripheral globular enhancement with infilling of the lesion over time, and quite often it can disappear completely. And the unique capability of ultra contrast enhanced ultrasound to watch this in real time occurring before your eyes and filling out that lesion absolutely reassures you of the benign nature of this abnormality, and no other imaging is therefore necessary. And this is where you can stop the downstream costs for that examination or that patient with healthcare savings. The next most common lesion is the focal nodular hyperplasia. And again, this has unique features. Sometimes atypical on the B mode examination, often it's isoechoic with the rest of the liver and may be difficult to pick up. But the classical feature is that spoke wheel branching pattern in the arterial phase, which may be very transient and may be missed on the CT examination. It's not going to be missed on your contrast enhanced ultrasound because even if you're blinking at that moment and the second or two that it appears, you can review your cine clip and you can spot this, this spoke wheel appearance. And then it becomes hyper enhancing and stays hyper enhancing throughout all phases of the examination. And it's this characteristic arterial phase spoke wheel pattern that you'll see time and time again to absolutely make sure that you know you've got the diagnosis right. The next most common lesion, the hepatocellular adenoma, presents a bit of a conundrum. It's supposed to be hyper-enhancing in a different pattern from the FNH in that it comes in from the periphery and enhances rapidly into the center. But it's supposed to stay iso-enhancing through all phases, but there may be some hyper-enhancing in the distal, in the late phase. Hyper-enhancing a washout is always a worrying feature. It's a worrying feature for malignancy. And the hepatocellular adenoma subtypes are the reason why one or two of them wash out. And they divide into, into different types of lesions. And some of these have malignant potential. But let's look why contrast-enhanced ultrasound may also be have the same problematic um, status as other imaging lesions. This is a young child of eight with a primary tumor of the ovary with a lesion in the liver. The contrast enhanced ultrasound shows hyper enhancing and subsequent washout. 
this in uh, our teaching is that it's a washout and this has to be treated as a malignant lesion. On the MR examination and the PET, it all points to this being a malignant abnormality. This lesion was biopsied and it turns out, or well, it was wedge resection of the liver, it turns out that it's an FDG PET CT positive hepatocellular carcinoma. It's a it's a well-recognized feature, though rare, that this can occur. So what I'm illustrating here is that no imaging technique is infallible, but what we see here is that all imaging uh, modalities are accurate in that they give you the same answer, uh, but inaccurate in that the answer was not quite right. We can also look at liver abscesses as a benign entity, and the importance of an abscess and using a contrast enhanced ultrasound is the presence of septations and the pockets of low reflectivity or pockets of pus. And this can guide you as to whether or not your drainage procedure is going to work. You can target the largest pocket and drain the pus, but you want to know if these pockets of low of abscess cavities are interconnected where well, there's a trick with contrast in advanced ultrasound to see whether they are interconnected because if you've got a drain in position and you've selected the area where there's most pus, you can inject contrast down that drain, a very small volume because remember when you're injecting intravenous, your contrast is diluting to eight liters. So when you're injecting into a cavity, you need one drop diluted to 20, 30, 40, 50 mils of saline. And by injecting down the catheter, you can see contrast filling the different cavities, and you know these are all draining into that drainage. So it's a practical tool for a liver abscess, and particularly not just for diagnosis with the enhancement of those septum through the, the abscess cavity, but also potentially to guide your drainage. Very often we see focal fatty sparing and infiltration in adult and pediatric patients, and this is going to be, become more of a problem, focal lesions in fatty livers with the epidemic of obesity that we're seeing now. Classical teaching is that the arterial, portal venous and delayed phases are all iso-enhancing for, for focal fatty sparing. In a number of children we've examined with uh, offline assessment of the uh, enhancement patterns. And in fact, we've reported that in there is delay in enhancement in focal fatty sparing, but not in focal fatty infiltration. And there's a slight difference from what the guidelines suggest at the moment. So it, it may be a little bit of a, a, a pitfall for you when you're first doing examinations of, of focal liver lesions. But beware, focal fatty sparing sometimes takes a little longer in the arterial phase. Malignant focal lesions, this becomes again, an important aspect of your examination. Metastatic liver disease, well, these are quite easy because the washout, uh, it may be hyper-enhancing in the arterial phase with rim enhancement, or it may be poorly enhancing, but it's always going to be hypo-enhancing very rapidly in the portal venous phase, maybe 30 or 40 seconds before, and becomes blacker and blacker throughout your examination. So we're looking at here, uh, injecting at two minutes, 10 seconds, and three minutes, 52 seconds, and they're much blacker. And if you wait, wait a while, you'll see more and more little areas of metastases uh, appearing on your examination. And this is relatively easy examination to, to, to perform. It's okay if you've got multiple metastases and you, you don't really need to um, characterize these lesions, but it's that single lesion which may be in a patient with underlying uh, cancer that may be important for further management and treatment, uh, particularly with percutaneous treatment. Hepatocellular carcinoma is a different uh, uh, aspect of the examination because the washout may take much longer. And I will show you examples of this later on when we talk about the CUS LIRADS for assessment of HCC. But basically the washout, it takes longer and is dependent on how differentiated your hepatocellular cancer is. Hyperenhancing is an important feature of hepatocellular carcinoma, and it's much more hyperenhancing than metastases. And this again 
lines up with the CT examination. So here we've got a HCC which is still hyper enhancing or enhancing as same as the, the liver in some areas at two minutes, but it's not till four minutes and 40 seconds that we see that that area is washing out. So what you're looking for in an HCC primarily is that hyper enhancing lesion with the arterialization clearly seen in your contrast enhanced ultrasound. And this is important because you can see this dynamically and watch it occurring as opposed to the snapshot that you, you get in CT or MRI. It remains hyper enhancing in the, in the late arterial phase and then washes out in the late phase. This is the hepatocellular carcinoma. Now the guidelines of course are very comprehensive and they'll detail the uh, behavior of focal liver lesions in all these phases uh, for you going from hemangioma, FNHs, adenoma, infiltration and sparing abscess in a simple cyst. And this is what you should use in your clinical practice when you're first starting or if you're early on in your contrast enhanced career and always choose a lesion that you can see clearly to start off with in a position that you can examine easily on the patient. Don't make it difficult for yourself while you're learning. And then you've got the malignant focal liver lesions that you'll see in a non-serotic liver, uh, metastases, HCC, and cholangiocarcinoma, which has slightly different appearances from your HCC, but clearly differentiating the two. Now, the American uh, College of Radiologists has their, their, their working group on looking at how you're going to assess liver um, features of, uh, of uh, HCC, and this group was put together by um, Andre and Stephanie Wilson in North America, but included uh, authors from across the world. And this ties in with recommendation 16 of the EFSM guidelines, which where it states that contrast can be utilized as first line to characterize focal liver lesions in liver cirrhosis to establish a diagnosis of malignancy, and this is CUSLRM, or specifically HCC, CUSLR5. But, and they recognize that CT and MR remain required for accurate staging of the patient. So using contrast enhanced ultrasound will identify and classify the lesion, but it doesn't stage that patient. And this is the chart that's produced by, uh, by the LIRADS, CUS LIRADS committee, going from LR1, which is completely benign, to LR5, which is a definite HCC, to distinguish it from LRM, which is the metastatic disease. And there are a, a whole bunch of other classifications between these two. So the job, our job is to ascertain which is the uh, most likely to be an HCC. And I draw your attention to the slightly different way which you're going to examine for an HCC because you're going to go on longer, sometimes up to six minutes, waiting to see whether the microbubbles are washing out from the lesion. So you've got your hyper-enhancing lesion into the portal venous space, and you're looking for that washout. So it may take you a little bit longer, but importantly, examine intermittently after 60 seconds, because you don't want to destroy the bubble. You very much want to pick up the hyper-enhancing in the arterial phase, but the washout is gonna take time. You don't need to watch it intently over that time as it's washing out. And more importantly, if you keep uh, the ultrasound machine and probe in that position, you're destroying bubbles all the time, which may be one of the pitfalls of thinking you've seen washout, but it's actually bubble destruction. So every 30 seconds uh, 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 would be ideal just to have a look of it, because if something's washing out, it's not going to wash back in at any stage. And this is the diagnostic table to be most uh, can, uh, keep in your mind. Is, and it's looking at if you've got arterial phase hyperenhancement and you've got a lesion that's a 10 or bigger and that washes out, it's almost certainly going to be an HCC. And this whole grading system for size and amount of washout gives you an idea of the classification and, your, and the confidence in making a, a diagnosis of HCC. Very briefly, because a previous speaker has spoken about this, the NICE recommendations, and we've seen all this, and it's important to know that you're going to be using 
these these techniques in your patients in the United Kingdom for all the indications that have been suggested by NICE guidelines. And in particular, the most important is that if you've got an incidental lesion in a patient that you don't know what it is, it's indeterminate, you are obliged to add contrast to the examination to make the diagnosis. So what is an incidental focal liver lesion? Now let's have a look at some of the evidence for uh, incidental liver lesions in your patients. This is a uh, publication from Newcastle and Tim Hawes group looking at what proportions of focal liver lesions detected by unenhanced ultrasound are inconclusive. If it's a small problem, we're not going to have to use contrast, but clearly it's not a small issue. So they looked at a retrospective study at over 20,000 records of liver ultrasounds, both from the general practitioner and outpatients. 9,175 uh, from GPs show that 18.4% of the, the studies for fo of these patients for focal liver lesions were inconclusive. And in 12,000 patients, 1,400 focal liver lesions, nearly 30% were inconclusive. So it's not a small problem. So the indeterminate focal liver lesion in both the general practice of primary health care and the outpatient setting is not, is not insignificant. So in your clinical practice, you should be injecting contrast for these one in five patients from GP who have a focal liver lesion and a third of patients from our patients who have a focal liver lesion. But when you find a focal liver lesion, how often is it benign and malignant? Well, if it's coming from primary care or if it's coming from the outpatient setting where there is no underlying carcinoma, it's nearly always benign. And why is it important to say it's benign at this stage? Well, when you think of it and you're examining a liver in a patient who's watching you, the patient's not asleep, they're watching what you do. They're watching your face. They're watching how you pause and go over one area time and time again. They know you've found something. Of course, they're not going to be, they're going to start worrying. You're going to say, well, I, uh, well, you won't say this to the patient. You'll say it to the, uh, report it back to the general practitioner and say to them, well, I found a focal liver lesion. I don't know what it is. This patient needs further investigation. So the patient gets referred from the primary care to the tertiary center to the hepatologist who then sees the patient, if you're lucky, two weeks later. If you're not so lucky, maybe four or five weeks later. They then request a CT or an MR, which takes another two or three weeks. The CT or an MR may take a week to be reported. The patient comes back to the outpatient clinic and 95% of the time, it's benign. So for three months, that patient has been wandering around thinking they've got a malignant lesion, sold all their property, gone on a world cruise and come back to find they're bankrupt because they've got a benign lesion. Of course, this is not always the case. However, adding contrast and getting that sensitivity and specificity and accuracy there of what it is, you can triage and manage that patient appropriately. So just to give you a couple of examples as we end up, this is a 38-year-old female patient referred from a general practitioner with abnormal liver function tests, which is often the case, and the, the doctor thought he could feel a mass. On examination, it's a fatty liver, but there's an indeterminate mass in the center, and on B-mode, this just does not look good. What about having a look at the contrast enhanced ultrasound examination? And as we see this playing, just watch here in this area where the lesion is. And immediately and beautifully, you see that spoke wheel image uh, vascularization. And more importantly, that lesion is hyper enhancing compared to the remainder of the liver. And as you go on, it, the central scar appears. This is classical of a focal nodular hyperplasia. Of course, you can't convince uh, your fellow clinicians early on that we've seen anything of note on the ultrasound. And the most expensive examination is then requested uh, on MRI. And also a CT is done for good measure. And all of them show exactly what your ultrasound examination demonstrated. 
But this 38-year-old patient was reassured immediately at the examination that she had a benign abnormality, and they may want to investigate it further, but we're pretty confident it's benign. A second patient, again 45 years old, upper abdominal pain, are there gallstones? A very atypical lesion is seen in the liver, but when you add contrast, the pathognomonic appearances of globular in peripheral enhancement and infilling of the lesion shows you that this is an atypical hemangioma. It is not necessary to further investigate this patient. These are two different patients, both with underlying cancer, with a focal liver lesion, and these focal liver lesions look almost identical. One has peripheral globular enhancement and infilling and is a hemangioma, one washes out and this is a metastasis. But instantly, you're able to tell this at the time of your ultrasound examination and appropriately manage these patients with the appropriate referrals. So I'm going to end up with just giving you a little um, run of questions. Why? Why use contrast-enhanced ultrasound? Well, it's dynamic, accurate, and gives you an immediate answer negates the need for more expensive downstream imaging, and this will become more and more important in any hospital setting where, where expense is something that needs to be very clearly looked at, not just for the individual patient, but for the entire healthcare uh, management. It's patient-friendly and safe in adults and children. Patients like having ultrasound. Patients do not like going into the MRI. Patients do not like the contrast injected in CT examinations. When? When should you use it? Well, immediately following the indeterminate focal liver lesion and also use it the other way around. CT or MRI imaging may be indeterminate and you use it as a problem solving tool. And how? Well, just type into the FSM and NICE guidelines and follow those guidelines in your clinical practice. Thank you very much.